Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future. Today, we have a special edition of our podcast. Josh, what are we going to be doing today? We are going to just be spending some time together, hanging out, catching up. Man, I love doing this. We realized that you know early on when we started the podcast, we talked a little bit about who we are, how we met, and kind of what we do to get started with this podcast. But since then, we've been really tackling some really good and fun topics, but we thought it'd be nice kind of midway through the year, I guess we're a little past midway, to uh, take a break, just spend some time catching back up with you and I, and letting the listeners get a little bit deeper into our lives and who we are. Yeah, it has definitely been a interesting year, I think, to say the least. We chose a good year to start the podcast. So all of those uh, pod, the bold predictions we made for 2020, those are out the window. Yep. So when we revisit that at the end of the don't, year, don't listen to that episode, <laughs> or do listen to it just to laugh at how yeah. far off we were because this was all pre-COVID. So anyway, COVID has taken over the world as yes. far as it's all anyone talks about. It seems like it's all the financial markets care about. It's pretty much what clients want to hear about and everything. So how has the year been for you and your family and your job and kind of what how's that going for on your end of things? Yeah. So for me, as a reminder, I have four kids. And in the beginning of this year, so when COVID first started, I had two of them in school, one in preschool, and then the youngest one is still at home. And so the two started homeschooling at the end of the year. I say homeschooling. We were schooling at home, uh, but the teachers provided the curriculum and did all the heavy lifting. And then during that same time, we started working from home as well. Yeah. And so, you know, I had my office, which was up in my bedroom, which was the door with a lock that we could keep the, <laughs> especially my youngest away. She, when she knew dad was home, she wanted to be there all the time. So I was there. And then my wife, who did an amazing job, then took care of doing the majority of monitoring their schoolwork, making sure they're getting everything done and taking, you know, again, when you have two different classes, two different grades, and then a preschooler who has their own stuff they got to do and making sure everybody's on track, you know, it was a lot of work um, and they, they finished well. Um, so that was probably the biggest disruption was we all like to have habits and routines and to have all that thrown out the window was, was rough. And then heading into the summer, you know, early on, I, I, if you would have asked me, well, I never would have even thought I'd be working from home. But right. throughout all that, I thought by this summer, we've got to be back to normal. And then sure enough, the summer hit and we were still continuing through this. And so we ended up having to cancel our vacation down, visit my brother in Texas. So there was there was a lot of things that changed that just kind of disrupted and threw off this whole year. And so, you know, watching my kids as they transition out of the school year into the summer, um, it was good that they could get outside, you know, play in the yard, ride bikes, do those things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was a different time frame. And, you know, two of my kids have birthdays in the summer, so they weren't able to have parties or anything like that, really have their friends over. So it was, it was a change. And then going into this year, my third born was in kindergarten. So now we have three right. full-time school and our school is doing half days. And so it's been a transition. Now they get on the bus in the morning and then they're home by 1230. And then they have the afternoon, Weird. they come home with assignments and they yeah. have, you know, certain classes are in person, certain classes are done virtually. And so they have reading and different work they have to get done once they arrive home. And so it's, it is a, it is still a transition and, you know, you feel bad for my kindergartner in that you know, his first experience in real school yeah, like, this and what it's like? totally <laughs> disrupted, but he doesn't know any different. That's the plus right. side. He doesn't know any different. So it's, it's done well. They've, they've all been troopers. So our family's done well. Um, but in general, it's been, I never would have imagined all that's come out of the, the virus and oh, the yeah. changes. What about you? Yeah, it's it's been interesting as well. So, you know, the ironic thing is that in the middle of last winter, I think it was, my wife and I were like, hey, let's get your office put back together and get it all nice and painted and organized. And so... Your like, DJ booth. Yeah, it's really, it's a good, it ends up, it, it wasn't, I had it all done so I could play guitar in there and practice guitar in there for church music and stuff like that so it was all done and put together and really nice and i never planned on having to use it 
So then when we were working from home for a while, it was a pretty easy transition. I have a nice door that shuts, and my wife Jenna was wonderful to just, you know, play and hang out with our daughter all day and let daddy get his work done. Mm-hmm. And But it was, you know, totally different than I had ever experienced for sure. But that went okay. And, you know, I think a lot of people think that when you're working from home that, like, it's just a cakewalk and you can pretty much do whatever you want. I think that's kind of like the, the impression. But yep. that was some of the hardest, like, days of of working Mm -hmm. just because there was so much going on in the financial markets things were changing every hour it seemed it seemed like so it was a lot of work but it was good and we were able to keep on top of things and i think that overall what the country and really the world has learned is that a lot of things can be done from home so that's going to change the way we look at things a little bit but you know we're kind we're back to the office in a 2020 kind of way yep and I think that that is, it's a good thing. There are definitely things that you miss about being around people mm-hmm. as much as you can. Yes. And uh, so it was good to kind of get it, get back into what we call the quote unquote new normal. Yes. But some of the challenging things for our family was is, you know, my wife and daughter were home all the time and they're usually out running around doing a lot of things. So some of the things that they needed to do were just, they weren't able to do as much. So that was really hard, especially when things were like shut down, shut down. Yes. Oh, you know, on top of that, you know, working from home, especially for you, you have a really nice setup here in your office. You know, you got multiple monitors, you have all your stuff you need for the research and the uh, and the analysis. Prior to all this, if you were home, you didn't have as much access to that. Now you could log in and see things, but right. not to the extent here. Yeah. So you were able to separate work from home. Yeah. But when you set everything up at home, yeah. there's that overlap. And I think I've heard from a lot of people that the work home situation got blended which isn't always a good thing in that disconnecting and being fully invested in your family when it's family time is hard to do you know because the office is just right over there and if an email pops in or something like that i i can go do it yeah it was a lot different and with my actual the technology setup it was kind of humorous so like i have a, a very nice ipad and i can access pretty much anything Mm -hmm. you know a lot of stuff if i want to read or but i don't have you know i have a four monitor computer set up with bloomberg terminal and everything's all and i'm really quick because i know where everything's at and i have it set up in my office so then i have to physically for when we were home i had to take a trunk load Mm -hmm. home of computer monitors a computer and stuff like that set it up we were working from home for a long time and then tear it back down and bring Bring it back back to the office and set it back up so I hope to never have to do that again. Yeah, because <laughs> I looked funny carrying all that stuff. To I my helped car. you. I remember I that. It was, it was it was a lot. So we're kind of you know we're into a twenty twenty normal groove. It was I think a, one thing that's been nice for us is that you know obviously a lot of businesses have reopened, so that feels good. You know, put on a mask and go to the store. It's mm-hmm. you can go to the store. You can yep. go to a restaurant. These kind of things are. In Ohio, that's kind of where it's yeah. at. You know, you can pretty much do what you yeah. could. Parks are open. Yeah. So you can go outside and get some fresh air, but also have your kids play. You exactly. Know, go out and do stuff. Go for a walk in the park yep. or, you know, in the woods. You know, we have nature trails around here and stuff. Things like that you can actually do and get out. Because you're right, for a while you were just stuck inside. Because yeah. it was, I mean, it was February, March. I mean, it's not like you needed to be outside yep. for those things. But as the weather turned, that was the outlet that you know was needed to yeah. get the people out and about. And it was really a big step in the right direction for our family when our church, you know, churches were able to open back up and yep. that was awesome. So we're loving being back in that and just kind of being around people again. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of a gift. Yeah. So that's COVID life. Well, speaking of that, so you you attend a larger church, yeah, uh, a bigger church, yep, um, who had online capabilities, true. And so you were streaming prior to this for Correct. people who wanted to see it or on vacation or anything like that. Yes. People that are maybe you know elderly who's stuck and can't travel, right? So that was great for you. My church is a little bit smaller. We had not done online stuff, and so that was something new. So a positive that came out of this. So is we now stream, yeah. And we're going to continue to, even now that we're open back up for yeah. in-person uh, worship. And that, to me, is a benefit out of all this, that now there's people that can connect live with our service that maybe couldn't be for. Yeah. So, you know, that's, yeah, you I take some positives out of this whole learning. thing. Yeah, there's some learning, I think, that a lot of people have had to do. And it, a lot of it was trial by fire, you know. you did, No one expected this to happen the way it did. and. Yep. Businesses have had to adapt, churches have had to adapt, families have had to do adapt, and I think that, you know, despite a lot of the 
challenges economically or you know obviously a health crisis uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of gr- growth in certain areas that has come out of it yep. as well so trying to look at it a little bit positive so we've had a lot of episodes so far josh how many so far we've had 42 this is episode 42 this one we're we're talking right now are in we're in episode 42 so, so you may say wait a minute you started the beginning of the year there's not been 42 weeks now we did a couple extra ones in true. there especially during covid we did a couple emergency or whatever you want to call them special broadcasts and but we're yeah we're about one every week, yeah. every Thursday is what we're trying to do and hope to continue to do. So what is your favorite episode so far? Yep. So I have a four-way tie, and let me explain oh, why it's goodness. a four-way tie. So might as well pick them all. I just, all of them, really. <laughs> uh, it's four-way tie. The four that I loved were the ones where we interviewed somebody. Yeah. And so we did two different book interviews. We did um, Jess, one of the other advisors here at Hicks and Zerker where we work. And then we also did our intern, Maddie, for a college edition. And I love bringing someone else in to talk with us. It's right. just fun because they're passionate about something. That's what, you know. So, for instance, Maddie was the most recent one that we did. Yeah. And she was an intern. She also was a college student. And yeah. we talked to her about, hey, what would a college person have questions for? Yeah. And she brought in some great questions and we worked through it. So, I just love that because, you know, those are, again, going back to we're always asking you guys for topics that we would rather talk about the things you're interested in than something that we think about. Right. So to me, those were always fun ones because those are things that came up that someone was passionate about and we could spend some time hearing about that passion. I think we actually had five because Adam, our CEO, That's right. was on Adam during, did a COVID, a COVID one. one. That's right. So yep. and between and then the two book ones we did, we did yes. Joe Sangle, 2020 yep. Money. Yep. And we did Ben Carlson. Yep. Uh, With the bubbles. Ooh, about asset bubbles. Yes. That was and really, really good. Don't fall the, for it. Yes. That was a really good one. So yeah, it's been a good it's been a good year for episodes. So out of those forty two, I would say that my favorite was the autonomous vehicle one. Okay. Uh, that um, was a fun one. That was a fun one. And <laughs> that was our seven double oh seven. I think it was double oh seven and I got to roll in like a James Bond theme into yes. it. So it was kind of a fun one to edit and put together. As well as just if that episode was actually recorded before Tesla went bonkers, mm-hmm. which if you have not been following Tesla stock, it's been like a rocket ship since that, since that episode got that everyone's Elon interest Musk started. Joke? Yeah, since Elon Musk. So uh, that was a really fun episode to put together. Um, but statistically speaking, because I can nerd out sometimes, our most popular episode outside of the trailer has actually been episode five, which is dividend investing for dummies. Okay. Dividend investing is something that we're very passionate about. Yep. Um, so that that's kind of a cool thing so far. But other statistics about our podcast is that thus far, so we're 42 episodes into this, and we've achieved nearly 6,500 downloads already that's on these episodes. And I just, yeah, we're thankful for all of you guys listening each and every week because yep. we couldn't obviously do it without you. And that's and we're it's exciting for us to see that number grow, meaning that's more and more people that are finding it, and that's more and more people hopefully that are getting a little more insight or knowledge into some of those investing topics. Yeah, and we actually have listeners from all over the world, which yeah. is something that's really exciting to us. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we're based in the United States, we're based in Finley, Ohio, so we have a lot of local listeners and a lot mm-hmm. of people from the United States, but we've got listeners from Australia and Canada and France and Brazil and other places in the world that it's just awesome. Yeah. And a lot of those are consistent weekly. I mean, it's, you know, the same True. people. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. listening. So shout out to all you outside of the U.S. We're glad you're listening. So oh, Josh. Yes. I think it's time to take a break. And this is, again, maybe we should ask what our favorite dad joke is, but let's do a dad joke of the week and a special one here Uh-oh. for you. Um, and so it's, it's just a, a thought I had. Okay, so kleptomaniacs. Yeah. All right. They. I don't know to, what that they is. They tend to steal things. Okay. All right. So there are people who steal things. Now you can't tell Habitually. a pun. Yes, they just have this thing. They always are taking things. So you can't tell a pun to a kleptomaniac because they take things literally. <laughs> they take things That's literally. Funny. Literally. Wow. Okay. So I learned what a new word meant. Now I know what a. I can't spell it, but I'll tell you what it means. Yeah. And now I see. I hope you guys tell these jokes to your friends just to get a good eye roll because they're classic. That's right. They're classic. And I will say my favorite dad joke. This is only because it was my son who told it to me first. Was the motorcycle motorcycle one? Oh, that is. I know that's my favorite one. Go ahead. You might as well say it. 
why could not why couldn't the motorcycle make it up the hill? Hmm, Josh, I don't know. You do know, but I'm going to tell know. you anyways. <laughs> Cuz it was too tired. Too tired. And that's motorcycle. so funny and so Just fitting it. because I am a motorcycle enthusiast. Yes. And so in the, 2020, that's something that has not been off limits. That's right. So, cuz you got a face mask. I yeah, you kind of I, I wear a helmet all the time. But um I guess that's kind of a side personal note is that the weather's been generally very, very nice this year. So I got to take my, this is, we're going to talk a little bit about vacations. Yes. And we can go ahead and do that next. But so one trip I took was in early June, went down to North Carolina, um, kind of in the Asheville area, the Black Mountain area with my dad and my uncle, my cousin, and we took a motorcycle um, trip and we just went around the mountains for a few days and it was really, really awesome. And we try and do that about once a year, but the weather was just great. So it's been great to be able to get out and do that. Something that you know, you can you can do in COVID world. And my dad and I have been riding our dirt bikes a lot again this year. And that is so awesome. It's just so much fun to get out. And, you know, you get to, it's a definitely a workout. Mm-hmm. And you get to enjoy, you know, being outside in the woods and yep. nature. And yeah, it's just been a blast. So you that's had, something that has not been cut off. Yeah, you had a nice bruise from one of those trips you showed me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't stay up on the dirt bike all the time. So, Josh, how was vacation for you this year? Yeah. What did you do? Where'd you go? What'd you eat? That's kind of a key what, thing. What I'm, I eat? Yeah, I'm hinging on. Um, we did two trips: one with my parents, and then one with my wife's parents. Uh, they, it's great that we're able to go on trips with them, and we've done that in the past. Um, they, my kids love it, seeing the grandma, grandpa, and being there with them. With my parents, we did, you know, with everything going on, you got to kind of rethink what you're doing. And again, we were going to hopefully go visit my brother and that we had to readjust that. So we actually did a camping trip because, you know, what's fun with camping is you set up your own little spot and you're kind of distanced just by default. And so we went camping with them um, and it was, it was great. We did a lot of just hanging out. There was a river there you could go tubing in, and so you just kind of float down, and you know, it was it was it was awesome. Favorite thing you ate while camping? So we made, you know, we cooked out the whole time. So we brought food to eat, and we did two things that were fun that like cooked right over the fire. Fire that I enjoyed. One was, and this brought me back to like Boy Scouts, the foil dinners where yeah, you put everything yeah. in a foil pack and then throw it in the fire and just Stick let it butter. cook. Yeah, Anything with a stick of butter go. and it'll eat. Yeah, just, just go. It's good. <laughs> uh, so we did that, and it was kind of a mixture of vegetables and some sausage and a lot of good stuff. I was mm. really, really good. So that was just fun because, you know, brought me back to, you know, Boy oh, yeah. Scout, Cub Scout days where you're... Two or three years ago. Yeah, you know, when I was well, when I was younger. <laughs> and But that was, you know, that's always, to me, that's like a camping meal, yeah. right? And then the second one was we did... Um, pizza pies where you with the little mm-hmm. cast iron clamper yeah, little thing. cast iron clamper things and so oh. you know for the kids so much fun you know they get to put the little things in there yeah. build it and then hold it over the fire and cook it and you know, it's just bread and pizza sauce and cheese and pepperoni in there make, whatever you I put make that tonight. but it's like just because you're cooking in a fire and you're out there yeah. camping it just makes it that much Delicious. better so those are the things that make it enjoy yeah. now we were there during my oldest daughter's birthday yeah and so we ended up bringing a cake and mm-hmm. celebrating one night there. So we didn't make that there over the fire, but we had it, and right. it was it was very good. So we we enjoyed that. Is that how the Uncrustable was created? You wonder because that's, I mean it's that's the what same it is. thing. It is. Oh, yeah. those are so delicious. We were that's talking about having. So it's fall now. It's starting to cool down in the evenings. We were talking about having a bonfire, and I think it's about that season. Yeah. So it was a fun weekend trip we did with them. Then we also went just recently, as states were opening back up, uh, went down south to South Carolina with my in-laws um, and um, my brother-in-law and my mother and father-in-law. And we went to a uh, small little island, and um, it was great. Again, you know, again, this is kind of how we've always vacationed, but it made it that much easier in yeah. 2020 is you rent a house that's professionally clean they had the whole fun thing about why that is all clean now but you go to the beach they have a pool at the house and so i getting back i said i think i spent less time with around people on vacation than i normally (laughs) do just here in town Uh, but you know same thing we ate dinner together and just for the kids it was for me and the kids it was great because it was just so much time with them on the beach and in the pool and uh we did a what do they call that uh oh there's a term for it like a southern broil 
Oh, where they boil everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had, it was crab legs and shrimp and mm. potatoes and corn and all that, you know, with the seasoning. And yeah, so that was good. That was probably a, Any donuts? really good meals. There was no bakery on the island. So you, had, you went a week so without you donuts? Not, yes. I thought you looked thinner when yeah, you got I back. Yeah, I did. I did not. I did bring a ton of snack food, so I made up for it with every other thing of junk food you could think yeah. of. But uh, yeah, there is no bakery on that okay, island. Okay. Yes, they did have ice cream, um, which the kids loved. Yeah, and um, yeah, but other than that, it was that was our two what we did, and um, and again, you know, just disconnecting, spending time with the family. That's right. something you know, you and I. It helps refresh you and and get you. You know, that's motivates you back to you know why part of why we do this is yeah. you know. One for the enjoyment, we love what we do, but the other one is, you know, it's for the families and yeah. to be able to reconnect is always great. So as you were coming home, we, we crossed paths. We crossed paths at some point because I was also headed to South Carolina. So my wife and our three-year-old daughter and I headed down with, my, or well, not with, because we were in separate cars, but with her parents, and we went mm-hmm. down to Hilton Head for a week, and we had a nice condo very within right between the pool and the beach, like it was awesome. And so we went down to the beach for a week and, you know, I got sunburnt, so I'm still peeling a little bit from that. See, Hard you, not to. You, you got to sit in the shade. That's where it's at. I know, but I was like, I'm going to get my money's worth. SPF 50, baby. <laughs> I By the end of the week, I was putting that's on what, like... That's, that's my like, default. It's do you just, have SPF 150? Yes. <laughs> you just start with that. Just put on that like a paintbrush and yeah. just roll it on. But it was a lot of fun. Um, so we were down there for about a week and we ate a lot of food. We spent a lot of time at the beach. Favorite thing I ate probably was I had a, uh, ooh, I ate a lot. So I love seafood. Mm -hmm. My wife's not a huge fan of seafood. And you can't really get great seafood up here. You know, we live, it's in Ohio. It's not seafood. Yes. There's no sea. You get fish, but you don't get seafood. There's no sea. So we're by the ocean there. So you can get seafood everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I did, we went to Salty Dog, which was very famous. Yes. Got a shirt. Of course, you got to do Salty Dog shirt. And I had um, sh- grits and shrimp, which is like a staple down there mm-hmm. in the, called yep. the flatland or something like that in the marshes. Yep. It was so delicious. But I also had some, some swordfish and some flounder that was just, oh, top-notch stuff. So I ate my weight in food that week. But it was a lot of fun. And uh, we got back. Like you said, it was just good to, to get a week away and, and be refreshed. Um, it was really nice to go with my in-laws because... Jenna and I were able to get away and have a dinner, yeah. um, just the two of us, or, you know, we could, in the mornings, usually, you know, at home, we get up and run or whatever, but we have to alternate because one of us has to be home with my yep. daughter, and my dogs can't watch her. Well, they can, <laughs> um, they'll just watch. Yeah, they won't do much. So we alternate in the mornings really early, but on vacation, we were able to go running together or whatever in the morning on the beach, and um, then, you know, my in-laws would be there with my daughter, so it was cool. Well, Who's faster? One, Who's faster? Um, it depends. I feel like on vacation I was much slower, but in normal life I'm faster. Okay. But my vacation body was dragging from all that That's fish. It. Yep. Um, but one of the coolest things that happened throughout the week was we were on our way back to the uh, condo from our run, and you know, off in the distance I saw a dolphin, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Not uncommon. There are dolphins all around, but it was the only one I saw. So I was like, "That's awesome, dolphin." So then we keep running, and we saw more and more pods of them kind of like as getting closer to shore as we got closer to our condo. And by the time we got like to where we were going to turn to our condo, there was a pod of dolphins fishing in the shallows like 10 feet from shore. It's crazy. And so it was really, really cool. And I'd never seen like wild dolphins before. Mm-hmm. So we saw wild dolphins and we can check that off the list. So that was probably one of the coolest parts that my wife and I got to see while we were down there. But my daughter just loved the sand. We did have, you know, multiple times at the beginning, we're like, no, you cannot eat this. This will not taste good. And that's why I like, just try it. <laughs> but, you know, that won't prevent a three-year-old from trying. Yes. yes. So, but it's great. So now we're back in the groove and, uh, yeah, we're just getting stuff done. So it's been pretty good. What about your kids? Any other activities going on this fall? Well, um, here in Ohio, again, where we're at, they are allowing outdoor sports. So, um, again, my three older kids are all playing soccer right now and, um, so that's always fun. They're enjoying it. They're being able to go out and play. There's certain rules they got to abide by. We're wearing masks on the sidelines and all that fun stuff. But, you know, to be able to get out and play is it's been good because all the spring stuff was canceled. So it's, you know, been a little while since I've been able to participate. So that's been good. And then, you know, in general, it's our, oh, 
so my third, he's five and he learned how to ride a bike a while, a little while ago, but you know, the, the training wheels were kind of iffy and then wanting to keep up with the older kids, he, he was like, I got to do this. And so we took bikes when we went down and so they were able to ride on the island and he's been really liking that. So having, you know, be able to go on bike trips and stuff has been nice mm-hmm. to have one, one less person on training wheels that you have to worry right. about. We, uh, we took, or we rented bikes down there on Hilton Head and it was funny because then we, we got a seat, a baby seat, or not a baby seat, a kid seat for my daughter and we put it on my bike and we were going down and first of all, she did not like a helmet. Mm-hmm. No three-year-old likes no. being in a helmet, but she has this amazing bunch of hair. So yes. I think she's it's probably crazy. just like, dad, yes. this is my thing. Yeah. Don't cover up my hair. Yeah. And then I covered it up and she got mad. Yeah. So she was like kicking me as, we're, like, <laughs> as we're riding <laughs> bikes for five miles. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she wanted you to go faster. Maybe that's she what it was. Has it a might need have been for faster. Speed. Yeah. I tell you what, we go for a walk about every day after dinner. And if I'm not walking fast enough, she's like, she lets you know, Dad, hmm. gotta get it done. Let's go. So the wind's yeah. not blowing in the hair. Let's go. So soccer, lots of soccer. Lots going of on soccer. For you. That's like an every night thing. What about your dog? So yeah, so we got a dog in February. Prior to everything shutting down, pre-COVID. Really, it was we we got a dog. Our, we had a dog before and it passed away, and so we got a new one. It's a Bernie Doodle, Bernie's Mountain Dog Poodle mix. Got this little puppy, and then COVID little hit. Little puppy, yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was a little yeah. puppy when we got it. <laughs> then COVID hit, and you know the kids are home, and so this little dog gets the whole family there all the time. I'm working from home, and this dog's just there loving it. And uh, the little puppy's now a, a big puppy. He's oh yeah, eighty five pounds. We'll, and we'll put a picture in the in yeah, the post. We should he's eighty five pounds? He's not even a year yet. And That's uh, so crazy. Yeah. So he's <laughs> he's loved this whole summer, and now that the kids are back to school, he is so confused. My wife tells me like when they leave, he just wanders the house. Now my youngest is still there. Yeah. Um, she's two, and they interact, but in a violent manner from a two year old, like, you know, just tackles them. And he's a great puppy. He, he's very good with the kids, yeah. but the older ones are the ones he plays with, you know, fetch and all those right. things and they're gone. So he just wanders the house lost. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's been a change for him. Um, he wasn't used to it, but he's great, very strong dog. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're work dogs. And so they pull and they're, they're very, very muscular. So the other day he was sitting on the couch, which getting on furniture is kind of that, thing I, I guess it's my fault i let him on there once but anyway my wife could not get him off the couch because he decided he wanted to be there and he was not moving yeah. he was sitting and saying no so <laughs> it was just funny to watch that is funny yes what about you you have dogs yeah so we have a three-year-old is he three four, four. we have a four-year-old king charles cavalier king charles cavalier spaniel cavalier king charles spaniel that's a lot a lot of words so it's, it's a lot of words his name is samson samson because he's huge and strong and mighty. So I thought of this name. His name is Samson because he's huge and strong and mighty. Actually, he's funny and lovey and couldn't bite anything if he wanted to. And he's very small. He's like less than 20 pounds. So he's four years old. And I was trying to think of when, you know, back pedal to, where we, to when we got him. So I think he's four now. And um, he's cute and fun. And his middle name is James. Because when we got him, LeBron James was playing for the Cavaliers. Oh yeah. So he's a Cavalier King. Makes sense. King I just Cavalier. Had, he was so James. his name is Samson James Wilson. Makes sense. So that's Samson. He's funny. Um he's pretty much been raised. So he's we we've never had any formal training for him. He's pretty much been raised by his older sister. So he's kind of got some Australian shepherdisms to him. Yep. yep. So we also have a 13, yeah, 13, that's Whew. old. Old dog. 13-year-old Australian shepherd named Sophia and she's really she's so sweet and she's really beautiful and she's got the Australian shepherd eyes, blue mm-hmm. and like half brown. And uh so she's gorgeous and amazing. But she um <laughs> she's getting she's really old so she's going deaf and i've always thought that she had like quote unquote i'm doing air quotes on a podcast yep. but quote unquote selective hearing or whatever for me and like if i call her to come in the house yeah, maybe if i went but to now her. i'm like nah she just she totally hear can't hear me I because hear i can come down and get let's go out and running or whatever in the morning i come down and into the kitchen where she sleeps and i can come up right next to her nothing nothing no movement i'm like are you breathing so that's sophia she's 13 she's old we call her granny She's starting to get to the point where, you know, she's not loving stares 
any mm-hmm. really steep mm-hmm. stairs yep. anymore. But she's she's so funny. So that those are our dogs. Good They're doing dogs. good. We like to walk them every day. Yes. Um, when we take our walk, which is a we do a couple couple, couple mile loop around our neighborhoods, so we take our daughter and our two dogs, and we just look like this crazy family going Happy down the family street. Go for a walk. So we have a lot of fun. All right. So that's just a little catch up to what what we've done, where we've been this year. Now turning towards kind of looking forward. Yeah. Um, what do you have from a goal standpoint? Anything you're hoping to accomplish in the near term? Yeah. So actually, you know, at the end of this year, it's been everything's been postponed, yep. but I will be sitting for my level two of okay. my CFA exam. Wow. And uh, so I've been studying for that, and that is, you know, it's not super easy. It's pretty challenging stuff, um, and they're pretty. It's comprehensive. There's just mm-hmm. a lot of stuff there. there so is, it's a very I'm difficult. Looking forward to continuing that process for that certification over time. Um, and you know, personally just trying to get a good balance of getting things, the things I need to get done, done at work, but also being able to be there as my three-year-old daughter grows up. Cause she just loves being home or, th- or she loves it when I'm home. So just yeah. getting to spend time with her is kind of the, uh, the, the main thing for me. So kind of a balance of all of that, but everything's going pretty good. What about you? Any goals going on? Yeah. So for me on, on the advisor side, I, got my CFP certified financial planner designation this year, uh, which was a couple of years in studying and taking the classes and, and taking the exam for it. And then prior to that, there were some other educational things I was doing. So it was kind of that break and that's where I'm at now, which not that I stopped doing everything, but it's, I'm not targeting any, especially designation, anything like that right now. And so what I've been trying to do is take what I learned in that and say, okay, where are the weak spots? What do I need to learn more about? And so that's when focusing on some of those fi- planning features of that we do in full financial planning, say, okay, which ones do I, would I love to learn more about? Mm-hmm. And I've been taking courses and uh, some educational stuff on just specific topics, which has been good as I'm slowly getting better and better at learning all those different pieces. And as everything's changes, this is a great year, you know, as tax law changes and all that fun stuff, you know, making sure that you're aware of how that impacts everybody. It's been good. And then personally, you know, as everything's been going on, kind of what you said is that focusing on, okay, what do I do now that takes up time that I could be doing something better with my time. And so reevaluating that I serve on some boards and stuff and just checking to make sure that each of those things with the priority and the time is something that I enjoy doing. I'm coaching two of my kids soccer right now and which I love coaching. It takes up a lot of time, yeah, yeah. but if I would, if I prefer to do that for my kids and for the other kids on the team, what are the other things just to make sure that I'm being balanced and everything that's there. So the reevaluation and, you know, being stuck at home for COVID kind of give you appreciation for family time as well. Yep. Because again, when you're doing a lot of stuff, you can spend a lot of nights rushing around and miss out on just family time. So making sure we keep that going as well. And we've all only got 100%. Yes, that's right. So our families, yep. big punch, big portion of that. Yep. So yeah, Although, I always joke families. with my wife, you know, I said, when I go 110%, that's why I need some rest every once in a while. And so <laughs> you, why you need take a nap. that 10% from somewhere yeah, else in the future. It's a nap. It's a 10% nap. So overall... It's been a choppy year to say the least. Then, so you know, you know, the market fell apart in March, down bear market territory over 30%, yep. rebounded to all-time highs, and now things are looking a little uncertain again. Yes. Yep. How are you or maybe I should say how are you and clients, mm-hmm. you know, feeling about the current situation, the current markets, the the potential for some continued volatility, as in case anyone didn't know, there is an election coming up. That's right. It's Surprise. coming up soon, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think well, it's kind of a twofold question. So clients, you know, there is that uncertainty. Yeah. And heading into this year, even prior, so last year, people were already talking about the election. They knew it was going to be a year of some volatility. And then COVID happened to really just turn that dial way up. And so having been through that shortest bear market ever... Right or fastest? What do you? How are you saying? Both. Shortest, it was fastest. both. It's everything. It was the fastest drop and then the shortest recovery. Okay, so that was probably, you know, brought to reality some of people's concerns about volatility, and so we spent a lot of time with our clients talking through that and the what ifs. But the the thing I like coming back to is, you know, the financial planning aspect. Although there is some shorter term stuff that happens, a lot of it is the longer term planning. You know, we're looking not only just for what's happening now, but preparing for 
the long term future. And so having that conversation, saying, okay, yeah, there is volatility, but there's always been volatility. And what we're looking for is what is your retirement going to be like 40 years from now? Yeah. You know, that, those type of questions saying, okay, yeah, markets are going to go up and down and they're going to continue to go up and down, not only up till you retire, but while you're retired. Yep. So let's talk through that, work through that idea. So for clients, it's making sure the focus is on the right things. Right. And then for me personally, you know, I feel like I always do in that. I like what you, that you're doing a lot of the research and the analysis stuff because <laughs> if you ask me today or tomorrow, what's the market going to do? I don't know. Yeah. But it's, it is that sort short term versus long term. Right. You know, it's, I like to focus on the planning. Yeah. I like to focus on those aspects that we can just say, okay, let's kind of mute the noise for a minute and just say, you know, going back to when we we're talking with, with Joe Sango about the 2020 money, it was the idea that, you know, setting those goals, thinking, you know, getting your mindset at least to think outside towards those long-term goals. That's huge. And so having, I'd rather have those conversations. Okay. Let's start dreaming yeah. and let's talk through yeah. and then work backwards. What do we need to do now to get there? And so to me, that's where my passion is. And also where you can get progress done because you oh, can yeah. get so caught up in everything that's happened now. You can just freeze, you know, you can have that what they call analysis paralysis where you just spend yep. so much time thinking through it. Nothing happens. Yep. What about you? Because you are deeper into some of this stuff than I am. Well, I'm going to burst your bubble, and I'm going to tell you that it might be a surprise, but I don't know what's going to happen what? the next day either. Man. Man, I know. So now you think less of me. Ah, but uh, no, for real, it's it's been interesting, and I think that anyone that claims they know what is going to happen should immediately be questioned. Yes. Because there are too many unknowns to know for sure. Yeah. Does that make sense? Too many unknowns to know. Okay, sure. yeah, yes. yeah. So I think that what happened in the sell-off in March told me that things people anticipated, investors anticipated that things were going to be bad. And then we saw, yeah, it was bad, but mm -hmm. it was bad but with an explanation that we can get our mind around and a lot of support from the government. Yep. So that sent markets back up. And maybe, you know, virus numbers weren't as bad as feared, the economic shutdown wasn't as long as feared those kind of things came in so that kind of sent the markets up for a long time and the markets were up really really strong yes. you know into the end of august at least mm -hmm. all-time highs for the s p 500 all-time highs for the nasdaq since like july or june like craziness yes. so what happened i think is that things they oversold which caused the big bounce but mm -hmm. then people overbought which is causing some of this like a pullback big pullback yes. we're seeing right now, you know. Nasdaq's down huge off of but after huge run up. So mm -hmm. I think that things are just and that's typically what happens in the markets. They go too far one way and they go too far the other. It's like a pendulum. They and swing yeah, back it's and just forth. there's like a rubber band effect. Yes. And overall, you know, the economy is still in a tough shape, but getting better. It's yep. healing. Yep. But I think there's a lot of uncertainty with the election that's going to bring some volatility, regardless of you know your opinion on how that's going to go or who should mm -hmm. do what. It is uncertainty. Yes. So we've got uncertainty around that, as well as we're seeing some some continued, you know, impacts of the virus, not just in the U.S. but some resurgence in Europe and things mm -hmm. like that. And I think that that's causing a lot of un a lot of investors to just kind of go, hmm. Maybe this isn't quite as rosy as we had made this out to be yeah. in the way we had let the markets get. So they're taking a little bit of profits, I think, at this point. So, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think that we're going to see a lot of ups and downs of some decent magnitude probably yeah. probably until into next year at least. Yeah. So uh -huh. I, I'm not going to say... That's a, that's a good prediction for 2020. I'm not yeah. going to say it's going to be up. I'm not going to say it's going to be down. I'm going to say you're going to have a fair bit of both. Yep. I'm going to say, though, that we have seen some significant support from both the monetary and the fiscal side of government intervention. Yeah. So our financial markets are, despite you know equity markets selling off once in a while, they're healthy. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're stable. And that's a normal part of the long-term process is this isn't the first time markets got overbought, which caused a sell-off yeah. to bring it back down closer to where they need to be. So... It's it has nothing to do about the health of the overall economy, like you're saying. It there's the underlying is our government stepped in to support on the recovery yep. and have done so to bring the economy back heading in the right direction. I mean, the government was pretty much saying, You guys 
people in the economy <laughs> and companies in the economy did not cause this pandemic. So let's not penalize you for mm. what is happening because no one can control that. So the government is helping out. I think that there's going to probably be some form of additional continued help, whether yeah. that be through, obviously, we're going to get continued monetary policy, yeah. you know, through quantitative easing, through interest rates being at zero pretty yes. much forever. Yeah. Not forever, but for a couple of years anyway. They're, they're not showing any time yeah, soon. They're going to be low at. for a while. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some sort of fiscal aid because the small business impact, like obviously you're seeing big companies continue to make mm-hmm. huge profits and these tech companies are just growing and growing and growing because their businesses can thrive in this environment. But the small mom and pop shops, they are not doing so hot and they've been more impacted by some of the shutdowns and some of the bigger companies. So I think that some aid for those is probably what's needed next in the next round. But these are all things that, Again, if someone claims to know what they're what's going to happen, they're crazy yes. because this year is one year that you really can't call anything. So all I can say is that we're what keeping a close eye on things, and you know it's this kind of stuff happens and this kind of stuff works itself out. Even pandemics happen. You mm-hmm. know we've not seen numbers like we've seen on this as far as an economic impact or stuff like this, but we've had other pandemics yes. to different extents over time. And those have all been put behind us. And mm-hmm. we have much better medical technology than we did when those other ones happened. Yep. So Now, you wonder what some of the lo- lasting impacts will be. I had this conversation with some friends. But do you think our generation will consistently own more toilet paper than we need going forward in the future? <laughs> like, will that be one? You think back to like your parents and grandparents yeah. who went through other right. events where they did things you just looked at like, why do you do that? Right. And it was just th- from that upbringing that certain things just triggered yeah. in their mind. Those people you know, who lived through the depression. Yeah. Saving, reusing yeah. everything, you know, all those different mindsets. Now for us, it's always, I need an extra case of toilet paper in my closet (laughs) just in case. Oh man, I do not know. All I can tell you is that I've not run out of toilet paper yet and I've not been a crazy person who bought it all. Yeah, but I have a household of six people and... I know, yeah, we don't use You need a lot of toilet paper to (laughs) keep, you know, when they had like the restriction stuff, like one four pack per You're like, that lasts a day. For, can I bring <laughs> can each of us and my family come in and buy one because yeah. we, we need we need some that is but, one of the biggest surprises yeah. of 2020 is yes. that it's it's humorous yes because to to, to, that was a classic example of overdoing mm-hmm. like the reaction of yes. stockpiling because in no way shape or form was the grocery store going to be deemed unnecessary or whatever so you were going to be able to go to the store yeah. If people wouldn't have done that, you would have always been Never able to get your issue. normal amount. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the funny Weird. things. Weird. But it's worth wondering if yeah. in the future there's certain those type of things. Because it's always like, you know, we're here again in the Midwest. You know, you get a snowstorm. You got to go out and buy your bread. You got to buy your milk. Right. You know, got to buy your eggs because you, those are the things that are perishable. Yeah. But you never have. I got to hurry and go buy toilet, toilet paper. paper. Nope. Maybe that'll add to the list, though. Maybe worth, it will. Worth looking. So that is how, in the nutshell, I'm feeling. I'm feeling like I really don't know what I, I'm not. I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen, yep. and I'm okay with that. By the way, yes. And I think that yeah, we we all should just say that we know that it's going to be interesting. We know that it's going to continue to be interesting, and the data is going to continue to evolve. But over a over a long time frame, I'm talking decades, mm-hmm. the U.S. economy will heal itself. The U.S. economy will grow, and the companies that are participating in that economy are going to get better and stronger, which means the stock market will go yes. up over time. Yes. And that's I mean that's what we're that's what our whole economy is built on is the innovation and advancement of our companies yeah. of coming up with new better ideas. Yep. And so if you believe that will continue, that's that's what you're investing for. Yep. And that's where we fall in the same ideas. Over the long run, that's where we're going to be. I mean, when you retire in 25, 30 years, whoever is what it is, yes. you're going to look back. Obviously, we're going to have funny stories and memories and interesting thoughts about 2020. Yep. But when you look back at your portfolio balance 30 years ago, you're going to be like, oh, what's that blip? Oh, yeah, that was COVID-19. Yep. So it's going to be okay. Yes. That's what we can say. You know what I like to do? What's that? I like getting emails. Emails from I get a lot in general. Of emails, yeah. <laughs> Just make that a blanket. I, get a lot I of, love emails. I get a lot of emails. No, Spam. I like getting emails from listeners. Yes. with topic ideas. That is. Do you like that? That is my favorite thing. Because again, coming back to helping people, 
we could pick up topics. You know, we have things that are going on in our life. We say, hey, that'd be a good podcast. Write it down. We kind of have a sheet of list of things we want to talk about. But what we always push to the top of the list and make sure that they're there is whenever someone sends us an idea, a topic or a question about, hey, this is what's going on. What are your thoughts? And so please, if you're out there and have a thought or have something going on in your financial life where you said, I would love to learn more about this, let us know. Shoot us an email. You can go to hello at theinvesteddads.com. There's a spot there to reach out to us, to contact us. Tell us your thoughts, your questions. If you do so, from now through the end of October, we will give you a free t-shirt as a thank you for sending in a topic. Now, we do have to put all these little like asterisks along there. And the, the biggest one being, it has to be a new topic. It can't be something we've already talked about. So if you do send us a question, we've already talked about it, we'll definitely direct you towards that podcast. But to get a free t-shirt, it's got to be a new topic. And unfortunately, for our international listeners, which we love and thank you, the shipping costs yes. kind of make this restricted to North American subscribers yep. only. So, so if you have a P.O. box here in the U.S., we'll send it there. <laughs> exactly. But you have to come get it. Yeah. So yes, send us an email to hello at theinvesteddads.com yeah. with a podcast topic idea. We would love, I mean love, we read every email that comes in. So we'd yes. love to hear from you. And as always, check out our free gift to you. It's a brief list of eight principles of timeless investing. These are overarching investment themes meant to keep you on track to meet your long-term goals. Check it out. It's free on our website. Josh, how can people help us continue to grow this podcast and continue to help people through the end of the year and beyond. Yes. So like I mentioned, email us any ideas at hello at theinvesteddads.com. There's a link on our website, theinvesteddads.com for you. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. Whatever you listen on, make sure you subscribe. That way every Thursday you get an alert for our new episode. And then again, if there's a topic that you know you listen to and it comes up, direct somebody to it. Yeah. Um, help out. Because um, we trying our best to get it out there. But again, it's it's really just word of mouth, someone that's looking for uh, some sort of financial discussion that would find us. So share it with your friends and family. All right. Well, have a great week and we'll talk to you next Thursday. Right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.